worship for Sunday, October the 18th, 2020. Today, in today's Gospel reading, when the Pharisees try to trap Jesus, he tells them to give the emperor what belongs to him and to God what belongs to God. Worship reminds us that our ultimate allegiance is to God rather than to any earthly authority. Created in the image of God, we offer our entire selves in the service of God and for the sake of the world. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. If you need assistance, please call me at the church office, leave a message if I'm not in, and I'll arrange for help. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The children's time, God at work. I'm so very glad you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. In today's first reading, Moses asks God for a favor. Moses wants to see God face to face, but God says it's just not possible for humans to see God directly. Here's a story about the difficulty of recognizing God at work in the world. A terrible storm was coming into a town, so local officials sent out an emergency warning that the riverbanks would soon overflow and flood the nearby homes. They ordered everyone in the town to leave their homes immediately. A faithful Christian man heard the warning, but decided to stay, saying to himself, I will trust God, and if I'm in danger, then God will send a divine miracle to save me. The neighbors came by his house and said to him, we're leaving and there is room for you in our car. Please come with us. But the man declined. I have faith that God will save me. As the man stood on his porch watching the water rise up the steps, a man in a canoe paddled by and called him, hurry and come into my canoe, the waters are rising quickly. But the man again said, no thanks, God will save me. Well, the flood waters rose higher, pouring water into the man's living room, and so he had to retreat to the second floor. A police powerboat came by and saw him at the window. We will come and rescue you, they shouted. But the man refused, waving them off, saying, use your time to save someone else. I have faith that God will save me. The flood waters rose higher and higher, and the man had to climb up onto his rooftop. A helicopter spotted him and dropped a rope ladder. A rescue officer came down the ladder and pleaded with the man, grab my hand and I will pull you up. But the man still refused, folding his arms tightly to his body. No, thank you. God will save me. Shortly after the house broke up and the floodwaters swept the man away and he drowned. When in heaven, the man stood before God and asked, I put all my faith in you. Why didn't you come and save me? And God said, son, I sent you a warning. I sent you a car. I sent you a canoe. I sent you a rowboat. I sent you a helicopter. What more were you looking for? It's not possible for us to see God directly. It can be difficult to see God at work in our world and in our lives. 
but wherever there is kindness. Whenever someone is helpful or caring, we can be sure that God is there at work. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open, eyes facing up to receive the gift of God's blessing and presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug. Now let us pray. We thank you, God, for moving us to be helpful, caring, and kind. Help us to see the evidence of your presence and work in our world, that we may be filled with joy and peace. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Glory of God Revealed to Moses Moses successfully interceded with God to accompany Israel to the Promised Land after their sin with the golden calf. In response to a request to display the divine glory, God recites a sentence that appears frequently in the Hebrew Scriptures. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Moses is not allowed to see God's face, but only God's back. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. The Lord said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said to the Lord, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be dis distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, the Lord said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Rock of Ages
Thanksgiving for the Church at Thessalonica. Most likely this letter is the first written by Paul. Paul gives pastoral encouragement and reassurances to new Christians living in an antagonistic environment. Their commitment of faith, love, and hope makes them a model for other new Christian communities. St. Paul writes, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that God has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known. So that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for God's Son from heaven, whom God raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A teaching on giving to the emperor and to God. After Jesus begins teaching in the temple, religious leaders try to trap him with questions. First, they ask if God's people should pay taxes to an earthly tyrant like Caesar. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to Jesus, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, We know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him into Darius. 
Then Jesus said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left Jesus and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Sermon, Branded by God. In today's Gospel reading, our Lord asked the Pharisees for a coin. On that coin was stamped the image of the emperor. It was clear that the coin belonged to him. Cattle are often branded with the mark of their owner. Sometimes people sport tattoos to indicate a close relationship with their mom or some other woman. Well, you and I too have been stamped, branded, and tattooed with the image of the one to whom we belong. The opening chapter of the Bible tells us that we have been created in the image of God. That same God who created us claimed us in baptism. As water was poured over us, we were moved into God's care and protection. For that's what it means to be baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It means to be moved into God's care and protection. The sign of the cross marked on our foreheads with oil in our baptism is the mark, the brand, the seal, the tattoo of the one who not only created us, but who also lived and died to reunite us with our Creator. That cross on our foreheads is the price of our rebirth. That cross on our foreheads is the mark of our God who would stop at nothing to care for us and to live in relationship with us. In baptism, you and I become God's property. Like the Roman coin, we too are stamped by the one to whom we belong, God. In today's second reading, St. Paul wrote to the congregation in Thessalonica, addressing them as belonging to God. To the church of the Thessalonians, he wrote, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That little Greek word in is a marker of close personal association and points to being one with, being in union with, and being joined closely to something, in this case, closely joined to God. The Good News translation makes this clear in its translation. From Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the people of the church in Thessalonica, who belong to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be yours. That Thessalonian congregation was God's property, in God's care, for they had been chosen by God, St. Paul said. We belong to God. God has chosen us, and our being chosen is expressed in our lives. A story is told about a man who owned a strange ring. Whoever wore the ring became kind and generous. When the man was dying, he wished to leave the ring to one of his children, but he could not decide which child it was that should get the ring. So he sent for the finest jeweler in the land, and he paid the jeweler to make copies of the ring. The father then gave the strange ring to one of his children. The others got the copies. But how shall we know, they asked, how shall we know which of us has the real ring? To which the father replied, it will be revealed by the kind of life you lead. In his letter to the congregation in Thessalonica, St. Paul thanked God that their relationship with God was shown in the kind of lives they led. St. Paul thanked God that the congregation's relationship with God was shown in works of faith, labors of love, and steadfastness of hope. Gifted by God, the Thessalonians had a faith which was shown in action. 
our faith is shown in part by our action in gathering to be met by God in weekly worship. And our action is a witness that for us right now, meeting with God is more important than all the other things we could be doing. Our actions throughout this week too will witness to our faith as we take time each day for the things that are truly important, as we speak to our children, friends, and those around us about God, or at least for starters about our church involvement and the reasons for it. God has given us faith, faith which will be active in witness. Chosen by God, the Thessalonians' relationship with God was expressed in labors of love. Many of us have aging parents for whom we labor in love. For some, that has meant opening up our homes to them. For others, it means frequent visits, meals, and yard work. Some parents need more care than we can give them, and so they live in a long-term care home. And we continue to labor for them with letters, phone calls, and trips to visit. We also labor in love by caring for our grandchildren. For some of us, that has meant bringing them to worship. In more normal times, some of us labor in love to teach our Sunday school children about God. That's a terrific commitment involving weekly preparation. And it's done gladly for the love of God so that others may know God's love. We labor in love as we guide our government to make choices which help us all to care for the poor or ill especially in these COVID times. We labor in love as we reach out to those in need instead of reaching in to serve only ourselves. We labor in love as we do what is caring and kind and not just what's easy or acceptable. To do the work of love is to do the work of God. Chosen by God, the Thessalonians work in faith, labor in love, and persevere in hope. Many times it can seem as if God is far away. Sometimes, like Moses in today's first reading, we long to see clearly. Many times it seems as if God is slow to act, but we can always be hopeful because we know that in Christ Jesus, God has overcome even death. We know with deep assurance that the world is in God's care. You and I are in God's care. So even when there are times, times such as Jesus' crucifixion, times when we may not be able to clearly see or feel God's care, we know that even then God is at work to turn things to good. We know that God does care, for that was God's baptismal promise to us as we were moved into God's care and protection. There's a poem which talks about the assurance, even in difficult times such as this. It's easy to be happy when life's a rosy wreath, but the person worthwhile is the one who can smile while the dentist is filling his teeth. It's not always easy to smile or to maintain hope. Sometimes it is indeed hard to trust that God is present for us. But having seen God at work on Good Friday means that we can trust even when, like Jesus, we feel deserted, and even when our whole world is falling apart, as it can be in these COVID times. And having seen God at work on Good Friday means that God's care is not dependent upon our being good enough or upon our deserving. When I was in public school here in Cambridge, we'd form teams for baseball at recess time. The two best players were always the two captains, and they would pick their own teams, alternating one choice after the other. I was actually one of the first chosen most of the time, and that made me feel good. It felt especially good to be chosen because I knew that I was no good at baseball. But I was always one of the taller boys, and so they picked me 
simply because I looked as if I'd be good at sports. And it's the same way with being chosen by God. You and I may not be very good at playing God's game. We're not so great at being God's people or showing God's love. But God chooses us anyway. Even when we feel as if God shouldn't have chosen us, we remain chosen forever. God loves us. God has chosen us. God has given us the supreme honor of playing on God's team. God has chosen you and me for eternity. And so no matter what we experience today, we can always hope for tomorrow. And we can make choices today which reflect that hope. You and I are the church. We are the people of God's own choosing. God claimed us when we were baptized. God branded us with the cross of Christ forever. And God has given us the Holy Spirit so that our God-given faith might be active, so that God's love for us might be shown in our love for others, and so that we would never lose hope. We have been stamped, branded, and tattooed with the image of the one to whom we belong forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.
with confidence in God's grace and mercy. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you call us by name and enable us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among your people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made and help us to care for those hurt by global climate change, especially the poor. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, may your word of social justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Work to realize the treaty rights of Mi'kmaq fishermen in Nova Scotia recognized years ago by the Supreme Court. Work against terrorism and anti-Muslim sentiments and help us to move toward mutual respect. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially those whom we name before you. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You listen as we call on you, O God, and you unfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the commission and blessing. Go now as those who have found favor in the sight of God. Be imitators of Jesus Christ, examples to all of the life of faith. To the world in which you live, give your love and service. And to God, give all that you are and all that you shall be. And may the glory of God's goodness be revealed to you. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ take root in you, and may the inspiration of the Holy Spirit fill you with joy. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.